One topic that crops up all the time is how you can make Apple CarPlay wireless. Now some cars do have this facility if you're new, but what happens if you use Apple CarPlay and you use a wired connection? Are you bound to one of these for life? Well, actually, no. In fact, there's quite a few adapters out there that actually convert the wired Apple CarPlay to wireless. So what I wanted to do is find out if they're all the same or which ones are the best value for money. So I went out and bought five of them with my own money. So to clarify, this video is not sponsored at all. I've purchased these, as I mentioned, with my own money, and I'm testing all the adapters for the same things. For number one, I wanted it to connect to the car's multimedia system as quickly as possible when you turn the car on each day. So speed is of the essence. Next up is the quality of the connection. So I'll be keeping an eye on all these adapters to make sure they don't lose connection because you definitely don't want that right when you're using the sat nav and they're just kind of saying no connection available. So I'll be keeping an eye out to make sure none of them lose connection. Now, another thing is the adapter's price point. I wanted to keep them as cheap as possible, but without compromising on the quality. So to clarify that, I've got kind of adapters from around 60, 70 pounds, all the way up to 130, 140 pounds. Of course, all the prices were correct at the time of recording and could change in the future. And finally, compatibility. Now, sadly, I don't have access to every single car out there. So with the adapters, make sure that they're compatible with your own car. So check with the adapter manufacturer, or at the very least, make sure they've got like a return or refund policy in place so you can return it just in case. Now, this is very, very important. Make sure that your car has Apple CarPlay in the first place. These adapters do not give your car Apple CarPlay. You need to have Apple CarPlay in the first place. These adapters purely convert the wired element to it to wireless. So basically, if you plug your phone in for Apple CarPlay and you want it wireless, these adapters are just that. So let's have a look at these adapters. Now, as some of these adapters have a USB port, you may need to convert USB to USB-C, which is why I've also included a couple of these. Now, I use these all the time, so if you want one of these adapters, look in the description down below for the link. So first up today, we've got an Apple CarPlay adapter called C-Play to Air. Now, C-Play to Air have literally been everywhere online with ads placed all over the internet, so I was itching to try them out. In the box, there's literally just a dongle with a USB-A connector. That's this end here. So you may need to buy a USB-C dongle that I just mentioned. Next up is the most expensive on this list. It's called the U2-X Pro by Autocast. Now, Autocast also produced another, which I'll show next. So I was quite curious to see why they had two and at different price points. This one allows Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So it's quite useful for families or friends that have different phones. So if you have an iPhone and someone else also wants to connect their phone and they have an Android. This had a USB-A end and USB-C end for connecting to different ports in cars. In the box, there were also two cables for connecting as well, USB-A and USB-C. Next up is the Autocast U2-Air. A little bit cheaper than the other one, but also has some more squared off looks and only has a USB-C port. I did also note it felt a little bit lighter and kind of not as well built as the other, but it's probably because of the different price points. I also noticed as well, this was only compatible with Apple CarPlay and not Android Auto. Again, just like the other Autocast, it had two cables for connecting to various multimedia systems in all types of cars. And finally, the cheapest on this list was Fine OD. I think I'm pronouncing it right. I wanted to go as cheap as possible and see if the quality is affected at all. So this one, priced extremely cheaply, was as cheap as I could find. Simple as it gets, it's just the adapter itself and a USB-C to USB adapter included as well. Now there was another one in this list, so I was hoping to test a total of five adapters, but sadly this last one actually developed a fault, so it won't be included in this review. I am in contact with the manufacturer, so hopefully I've just got a faulty one or something similar. So let's head back to the other four. Now guys, what an interesting few weeks testing all these Apple CarPlay adapters. Now, uh, I have been testing them in lots of different manufacturers of cars just to ensure that compatibility. So I'll share all of my results in just a moment. Now, the most important thing that I found personally, I've been using wired Apple CarPlay for, well, forever. Um, so I, my own personal cars haven't had wireless Apple CarPlay. So I've been bound to that cable all this time. Obviously using these wireless Apple CarPlay adapters I've then found obviously that you're using up your battery a lot more because it's running Apple Maps or Google Maps and playing music 
so you actually have a more depleted battery because it's not plugged in. Kind of the obvious thing. But this thing brings me neatly onto where do you plug it in? Because if you only have a USB port, I mean, most cars like this particular one have a few, but if you only have one, how do you plug it in? Or how do you not occupy as many ports? So this is where two of these adapters have a feature that I absolutely love, and that is pass-through charging. So this is the C Play to Air and the U2 uh, X Pro by Autocast. Both of these have an additional USB port or USB-C port, depending on which one you're using, uh, for charging. So this way that, you know, you can jump in the car, it will connect wirelessly, and if you want to, you can plug it in and then top up your phone. So that was quite welcome. The other two sadly didn't have this, uh, so that was the uh, Autocast Air one and the, the cheapy one on Amazon, uh, Fion, do you, however you pronounce the name. But um, yeah, those only had one port, so you couldn't charge. You'd have to either unplug it and then charge it or use another USB port to charge. So for these two, I, I, I definitely quite liked that. So we'll start with C-Play to Air first. Now I tested all the connection times, the boot up times of all these adapters, because don't forget, the multimedia system in the car needs to start first, you know, when you first turn it on, then the adapter needs to load up. So I loaded up the multimedia systems on every single car I tested, and then timed with a stopwatch the fastest launch time that the adapters would do. But the fastest time, uh, kind of repeatedly, that C-Play to Air did was around 23 seconds. So that was uh, pretty good. The Autocast U2 X Pro though, that is actually around the 25 second mark, so that was a couple of seconds longer. Still really good, but uh, obviously something to factor in. After this we have the Autocast Air. This was the fastest out of all these tests, of course only had that one USB port, but this was 16 seconds, which is quite surprising actually because, you know, when I did the unboxing it felt kind of cheap and it felt kind of like empty on the inside, but actually it was the fastest here today. So if speed is of the essence, this is definitely the one to go for. And then last but not least is the Fino D1, however you pronounce it. Uh, this one was around the 19 second mark on the fastest time for connection. So that was pretty good as well. All of them worked very, very well. So I didn't have any dropouts on any of these adapters. So that was welcome to see, because again, as I mentioned at the start, the last thing you want is when you're navigating around somewhere where you don't know, built up area, London for example, lots of traffic everywhere and you know the connection just drops and you lose your phone call, you lose the maps, you, you don't want that but I did not have any dropouts on any of these adapters I tested for the past few weeks. One other thing of course was compatibility. Now I did test this in as many cars as possible and they all worked in every single model I tested apart from one adapter. So one adapter uh, that didn't work was actually the Autocast Air. So this was the one, the fastest one. This one didn't actually work on my own personal car for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, I tried all sorts of uh, USB cables and things like that, but it just didn't work. But it did work in every other model I, uh, I tried. But um, yeah, that's why it's very important to double check compatibility. So after all this guys, which one would I recommend? Well, it's got to be quite a close contender because, again, as I mentioned earlier, the, the pass-through charging of these two is quite important to me. So, again, if you have wireless charging in the car, then this might obviously sway your decision slightly. But uh, for me, I, I don't have wireless charging in the car, so being able to charge my phone in the car is quite important. But I guess if you're after maximum compatibility, the U2 X Pro is probably the one to go for because this also works with Android Auto as well. So... If you have any friends or family in the car who you kind of haven't managed to convert to Apple, <laughs> um, that one's a pretty good one because you can do CarPlay and Android Auto. So that one's pretty good, but it is the most expensive. Um, C Play to Air, yep, really good. Um, I do, of course, like that pass through charging. Of course, it is only compatible with Apple CarPlay, so I'll see factor that in. However, if you are after the fastest connection time, that's the Autocast Air, that was this one. But of course, for some reason, it didn't work on my own personal car. Um, I'm not sure why, but um, this is why checking compatibility is very, very important. Because if I had just bought that adapter for my own car, then I'd be a little bit disappointed. So check compatibility. And then cheapest of them all, of course, was this one. So if you're literally just after Apple CarPlay just to work in the car, then yeah, I actually didn't have any problems with this one at all. But of course, it didn't have that extra port. So loads of things there to obviously factor in guys but yeah let me know if you have any questions down below i'll try my best to answer again do double check with the adapter manufacturers if they work with your own car as uh, they do 
quote that um, they can't guarantee compatibility, but just do your own research and check if they've got like a refund policy, as I mentioned. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Now, if you're having problems connecting Apple CarPlay in your own car, of course, make sure that your car has it in the first place. But I do have a separate troubleshooting guide. That is this video right here. So click on this one if you want to see more about troubleshooting Apple CarPlay in the first place. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Until next time, see you then.